Hey guys, welcome back to Artifact Studios and you're watching sound design request number 5. This one was requested by, well, a couple of people on my Skype production chat. And this one is going to be about creating an epic cinematic sounding intro. So I use those intros quite a lot. And in today's video, I want to show you how to make something like this. So, did that sound epic or what? <laughs> so, um, there's a lot of stuff going on in this one, and I had to freeze a lot of tracks in this one, because otherwise my CPU and my RAM would not be able to keep up with this. But, I'm gonna try to run you through, and I hope that Ableton doesn't crash down. Um, the first two tracks, when I... S or, let me say, the, the first thing I need to say about creating cinematic intros is... In this one, I used a lot of filtering, but... The key thing is that without the filters, so if I turn all these auto filters off that are on these group tracks, oh, that's the compressor, that one, and I play it now, it's not going to have that building up kind of tension it has because of the filtering going on, but it still sounds like a great epic cinematic intro.
So that's without any of the filtering. And you can hear that it still sounds like a really good orchestral kind of piece. And why? I, I always try to achieve that. And I have a good reason for that. Within a traditional orchestra, you don't have the ability to add a filter. So you should definitely try to get that feeling and that sort of that that tension building kind of feeling without any of the filtering. And I added some filtering just to make things a little bit better. And sort of like to emphasize that tension building movement that I have throughout this piece. So if we start this track, we start with a mul multiple uh, instruments at the same time. Um, one of the layers I start with is the piano layer. Now, the piano layer and this whole track actually is built on one chord progression that I came up with. And the chord progression itself sounds like this. If I turn off the filter. So this entire chord progression is based on the key of E minor, on the E minor scale. And the chord progression itself is E minor. So that chord is E minor. Then we get a B minor. Then we get an A minor. And then we get a D major. Then we get another E minor, another B minor, another A minor. And then we get a D major right here. And then a C major. So that is the chord progression that I used throughout this entire piece and every single melody and chords in this particular piece is based on that particular progression. Um, the first layer that you hear in the tune when the tune starts is the low pass version of this piano part, this piano group and it sounds like this. So because of the low pass the smaller sort of like the ghost notes in the piano loop that give it more of a melody kind of thing are much more deeper sounding than when I take the auto filter off. So it helps to build a little bit more tension especially in that first part. Um, the piano chords are uh, coming from a plugin called Philharmonic. I can unfreeze this one and what I've done here is I've added quite some compression to the piano uh, especially to the chords because because of the filtering they become really faint and on the group I'm adding a shitload of compression again and that is just to bring those chords up if I turn off the compression the piano part starts like this So it's pretty, well, it's, you can hear it, but it's not really that loud. And with the compressor on, it really evens out everything. So that's pretty good. Um, now, in the MIDI part, you can see most of my notes are just the exact same volume. These notes are all the exact same volume. The bass notes are a little bit quieter. If I bring this up, you can clearly see that. So the top ones are the chords itself, and the bottom one is the bass note. So I haven't really bothered playing around with the actual uh, velocities of the notes. But instead, I was a little bit lazy. And I threw on the velocity media effect, brought up the random a little bit, and played around with the other settings. And that basically just changes the velocities for each individual note, just ever so slightly. So none of these chords actually sound the same and that's pretty good i'm doing the same on this one if i unfreeze this um i have an arpeggiator on here but i don't need don't need it because i'm not using it and the velocity is doing the exact same thing on this particular track so the piano itself comes from a plugin called Phil philharmonic and 
It's by Myroslav and I really love this plugin. It's a great orchestral plugin. It has all kinds of stuff. And as you can see, it also has these piano piano uh, presets that really sound good. I mean, they really sound like a realistic piano. Sound much more realistic than the piano that comes with Ableton Live, for instance. So, yeah. Definitely a good one. So that's what I'm using for the chords. And at the same time, um, we also get a layer of strings. Now, when I create an orchestral piece, I always like to make sort of like a hybrid of real orchestral instruments and electronic orchestral instruments. Or, well, they're not really orchestral, I guess, but if I unfreeze this particular track that starts right at the, uh, the start of the tune, this is also that same chord progression, but it's playing a totally different kind of instrument. And it sounds a little bit like this. So it gives it a little bit more of an ambient kind of feeling. If I take off the auto filler, gives it a much more ambient feeling throughout that track and it really fills out the background of this tune as well. So that's pretty good. And together with the piano, they sound pretty good together. So that layer just adds a little bit more ambience to the piece. and. Because I found this to be a little bit too less and I wanted something to give the start of the project and the entire project itself a little bit more impact, I also added some percussion. And the percussion group starts off with this cymbal layer. So if I unfreeze that, um, cymbal layer sounds like this. Added a bunch of reverb on this one and some delay which is giving it that nice delaying kind of vibe so that layered with the piano and the strings gives it a little bit more of an impact and add some more character to the whole piece I guess it just makes it sound less boring and that's basically what you want. An orchestra is built of a lot of people. So you've got a lot of stuff to work with. Then on the end of that particular part right here, you can hear that reversed kind of sound. Um, it's coming from this layer, if I unfreeze that. Um, again, some reverb on this, quite a lot actually. and. I EQ'd it so there's no low end in here and what this is is actually just a reversed crash and I took off the very first part of that crash and it just sounds like this it's followed up by the same crash but then not reversed and you can clearly hear that there's a lot of reverb on there so that's good um, now that introduces the start of the new 16 bars and there's a whole bunch of instruments that come in during that part so we can see for instance that there's a whole bunch of strings coming in um, the first layer that comes in right here and these are really interesting is this particular layer It's again following the same chord progression, but as you can see, it's not actually showing the notes that you hear, right? Well, that's because this is made with a plugin that's really great for orchestral, for orchestral stuff, and it just saves you a ton of time. Um, it's called Action Strings for Contact, and it's great because it has a whole bunch of these different sounding rhythms, and it has a lot of them. I mean. There's a lot of these stuff in here, and 
what you can do with it. It's pretty cool because I can say, for instance, I want this one. And now this part sounds like this. So I could actually change the whole vibe of the part. I could even go to a different tab, for instance, take this. Or this. Or this. It's really interesting. Um, for instance, I can say, let's go to... Let's go to the machine guns or the stormtroopers. I don't know. Let's go to the machine guns. Now we get something really complex. And it still follows the chords that I actually play. So that's really cool. And you can get some really interesting stuff with this. So it's just a matter of playing around with that. Um, I like the basic Bulgarian and then this last one, I think. Yes. It sounds great. Um, there's not really much going on in the track itself. Um, again, it's just the strings and the auto filter opening up. Without the auto filter, you can really hear it's a violin. It's a violin section playing this, but with the auto filter, it just comes up gradually. And there's also a volume automation going on on this particular track. So that might be a little bit important. It's a little bit more quiet during this part. And just comes up while the filter is opening. So um, that's pretty cool, but there's another layer coming in right at the same time. And that's this layer. So it's actually the same thing. It's, again, action strings, but it's a different patch. It's the basic Bulgarian low patch. So it's just doing the same thing, but more with a, like a bass section of the orchestra. And when we layer that with the other higher strings, You don't really hear them yet now, but when I go to here... Really gives it that epic sounding string section, and that's something that I really was searching for. Now, when I browse down in my project, I can see there's another part coming in during that particular... During the second 16 bars of the track, and that's a wind section. Again, there's two instruments coming up. First one is, I call it the Fantasy Wind. Now this one is not really playing the chord progression, it's playing single notes, but all of these notes fall within the chords that are being played by all the other instruments. So it still works together. And it sounds a little bit like this. So you might be able to guess why I call it Fantasy Wind. Really gives it that atmospheric kind of character. Now, this one is again a contact instrument. This one is from the Lumina by Project Sam uh, library. And it's called uh, The Witch Cottage. Pretty cool patch, I really like it. And, yeah, this, this just gives you a whole bunch of stuff. You, you can see I can play around with the different kinds of choirs that are in here. Um, they also have hotkeys, so I can actually trigger them if I want. And you can see the elements that I'm playing with. You can change attack and release times. I have some reverb. It's pretty cool, actually. I really like the sound of this one. And... It plays together with a flute patch. Now the flute patch is again playing the chord progression. If I take off the auto filter, that's the flute patch. Now if you can hear, it's also penned to the left a little bit. 
depending is not happening within the tracks in Ableton Live, depending is actually happening within the Philharmonic patch. Um, the panning here is set to the center position, but the cool thing about Philharmonic is that all of these different elements of the orchestra are actually panned to the position that they would naturally be on a stage when they are performing with an orchestra. So you don't really have to bother with panning a lot, but you can change the panning if you want. I mean, you can, I can pan this to the right and that will bring it back to the center again. But from itself it's already panned so you, it, it really sounds like a rich and full orchestra when you build an entire orchestra with all these patches. Um, these two together it just sounds a little bit richer than without that fantasy wind layer. It gives it a little bit more character. I like it. Um, so that comes in again here and there's another layer coming in and that's a vocal layer. Now I freeze this one already because it was really eating up my CPU and my RAM as well but it's also coming from a contact li library. I think it was actually the Lumina library as well and the choir sounds like this without the auto filter. So it's really just a choir and I can play it with the auto filter. It sounds much more deeper and I really like that. So um, again there's quite some more stuff coming in during the second 16 bars. I've got a whole bunch of percussion coming in. If I play the percussion without anything else, listen. So you can hear what's going on, got some low really heavy drums and some more higher drums that give it the upper harmonics. Then I got some of those reversals that really suck you into the next hit. It's all about layering. And here I got a ride coming in, the ride comes in in the next 16 bars which I think I should talk about a little bit more. But before I do that, I'm going to freeze these two tracks. Just like that. And I just hope my computer is not going to crash. Um, so the next 16 bars. Um, the piano just stays the same throughout the entire piece, as you can see. And right here I've got some more strings coming in. I've got a cello coming in. Let's see. Unfreeze it. I've got a cello coming from contact. And this is actually just... Um, one of the stock libraries, one, one uh, cello coming from the factory library of contact. I think it sounds pretty good. I changed the reverb type to Concert Hall A and added a little bit more reverb. Really sounds pretty good. Um, I layered that with the full strings patch from Philharmonic. really makes it sound much deeper, much richer. That layer, and this layer, as you, um, you knew that right in here, 
we had a couple of layers that were panned to the left, right? Well, this full strings layer coming from Philharmonic is actually panned to the right and not to the left. So I'm panning individual instruments to the left right here, and in the part after that, the right part is filled up with the full strings patch. As you can see right there, it's a little bit more to the right. So I am gonna freeze these now because I've talked about them and I don't want any clicks going on. Oh, that's cool. I don't have to refreeze it. That's really, that's great. Um, let's see. Does there, are there more stuff do that come in? Not that I see. Oh yeah, well, that ride comes in right here. Right just gives the whole percussion section a little bit more, a little bit more tempo, a little bit more pace. Just that little offbeat hit with the ride. It's pretty good. On the ride itself, I added some reverb, as you can see, with quite a lot of reverb. And that's also it for the percussion section. There's one more percussion thing going on. It's just reverse cymbal. With a bunch of delay in there. Um, in this section, right here, the last 16 bars of the track, I have a few more instruments coming in. Um, I've got... Oh, wait, I forgot to talk about one layer. Right here, um, I've got one more layer coming in, and that's a violin layer. The violin is again coming from Philharmonic, and it's actually panned to the left again. So this part is really being filled out in terms of the stereo spectrum, and it really becomes much wider when this particular part is playing. Um, you can hear that, I mean, this is before any of the strings that are panned come in. It sounds quite centered, quite mono, and those come in and becomes much wider. And that really adds to the whole, sort of like the whole vibe of the track. It makes it sound much bigger and much more epic. Um, so on that last part, I have another instrument coming in. So let me freeze those two. And I have this violin coming in on the last part. So that's another violin layer. But it's higher in pitch than the layer underneath it. So that layer just makes it sound bigger without it. It just becomes a lot bigger by adding that layer. Really cool. Um, there's one more thing coming in, and that's an oboe layer. Now an oboe is sort of like a flute kind of instrument, I think. It sounds a little bit like this. This one is again panned to the right, and I don't know if you have heard throughout this entire video, but most of the instruments have a pretty long delay, and all of these plugins give you that sort of like control. So as you can see right here, I've got my controls for my attack and the release, and when you open up this particular plugin or this preset, the attack and release are most likely going to be pretty, pretty low. like that and I bring up that attack time quite a lot and that release time is going up quite a lot as well so notes start to overlap a little bit
and just that that gives the whole track a little bit more of a I don't know mysterious sounding thing so you can really hear how each of these layers sort of like add up to the final thing and that's really important when creating stuff like this you really need to sort of look at the big picture and try to get everything sounding right you know just try and make something that sounds realistic because that's what you're going for and on all these tracks on all these groups i'm sending them to my reverb and that reverb provides quite some reverb listen this is at the start of the tune it's not really that much. Then we go to the second 16 bars. That's quite some reverb. And you would say I'm drowning the track with reverb. But the thing is that these, these productions are so much different from electronic productions. If I would do this in electronic production, I would drown my track in reverb. And it will most likely start to sound muddy and lose impact. But... On this particular thing, reverb is something that you need to use in a creative kind of way. And I'm sending all these stuff to the reverb, and I'm doing some stuff on the reverb as well. The reverb is a Convolution Reverb Pro that comes with Max for Life. And I'm choosing one of the Halls presets, so I'm using the Berliner Hall, which is actually a real hall that exists in the real world. And I've taken out all of the low end with the EQ that's built in. And I'm also adding an overdrive. So that overdrive, it makes the reverb much louder. And I don't know, it also adds some harmonics here and there. And I really like that. I like the sound of it. And I'm also cutting off all the lows again of the reverb and boosting the highs just a little bit. Um, that's basically it. On the master track, I am doing still doing a bunch of stuff i have one eq and you might think this eq is not doing anything well it's actually high passing at 30 hertz and it's low passing at 22k so that just makes make sure that we don't have any of the super low frequencies and super high frequencies um then i'm adding a multiband dynamics which is actually adding a bunch of compression without it we would get something that sounds like this. And with it... It sounds much more evened out. And finally, I just added one glue compressor with a really slow attack time. And just a medium release. Quite some threshold until I get about 5 dB of gain reduction. Maybe a little less. And then I brought the makeup gain up with soft clipping turn on until I see that the volume is coming right at the 0 dB level. And you can also see that by the clipping button that's right here. It shows you how much clipping you get. So on the drums I'm getting quite some clipping, but that's not really a problem. Um, that actually is the entire piece. I can play with this one more time. And I'm now trying to find out what to do in the next videos. Um, thank you for watching this video first, before I play this one more time. Thank you for watching this video. Please keep on liking and subscribing all of the social media profiles, channels and pages that are in the screen right now. You guys are doing a great job and we are growing really fast. And that helps us to become better and better and bigger and bigger. So that's pretty good. I like it. And... Other than that, I'm doing a lot more stuff. I'm trying to do more of these kind of videos. So if you have any requests for me, please post them in a comment below this video or send me an email. You can find my email uh, contact form on my website, which is www.artifacts-studios.com. On there, you can find a whole bunch of stuff for music producers. You can actually find a community where you can talk to other producers as well. You can ask them to give you some feedback on your music, which I think is one of the most important things in becoming a better producer. And yeah, other than that, I hope to see you back soon. Peace.